Hello, welcome to ResoCoder. In this tutorial, you're going to learn about if and switch statements in C Sharp. By now, you should already know that we can store some data, like numbers and strings, inside variables. But until now, our programs have been doing the same thing all the time, and that is no fun. For example, this program here, that we wrote in the previous tutorial, is doing the same thing all the time. It just reads from the console all the time, then it adds first and second doubles together, puts them into a variable called result, and then it prints it to the screen and waits for the termination of the program. When we want our programs to do some other things based on some conditions, that is when branching statements come into play. There are two branching statements in C Sharp, if and switch. We're gonna start with the if statement. In the previous tutorial, we've talked about the bool data type. You can either set a bool to be explicitly true or false, like this. Or you can set the value of a boolean with a simple comparison expression. For example, 5 is greater than 4, this is gonna return always true, because obviously 5 is always greater than 4. You can obviously substitute these int literals with variables to put some actual usefulness to comparisons. So if we create an int named x and set it to be 5, int y and set it to be 4, and now if we compare x and y, it's actually gonna be doing the same as our previous example. But now when I change the value of y to be 6, it's gonna return false, because 5 is not greater than 6. You can also set a boolean to be true or false by calling a method. One of such methods is for example string.contains. If we create a string, call it str and set it equal to hello. Now we can call a method called contains on our string to find out if it contains the character l, like so. And now the bool my bool is gonna be true. Let's test it. Press start. You can also negate, which means invert the value of a boolean by putting an exclamation mark before it, like this. So remember, this was true before, but when I put exclamation mark before this bool, it's gonna be false. And as you can see, it is. Now that we know all of this about booleans, we can start writing if statements. An if statement looks like this. If, two parentheses, some expression or boolean or method call which returns boolean. So for example, our 5 is greater than 4, which is always true. And when the boolean inside the parentheses is true, the code inside the if statement executes. So if we write here console.writeLine and hello, now it's gonna execute and it's gonna write hello to the screen. However, if we change this the other way, so if 5 is less than 4, as you can see, even the compiler warns us that it's unreachable because the code inside this if statement is never going to run because 5 is always not less than 4. Now let's introduce an integer called x, which is gonna be equal, for example, to 5. So, and now we substitute the 5 for x. We can also change the hello to less than 4. Then there is an else if statement, and it's used when you want to check for something else if the preceding statement is false. So, in case that this if statement does not execute, that means if this boolean inside the parentheses is false, which in this case it is, if we put an else if and inside the parentheses we check for something else, so for example x is 
greater than 4, the code inside these two curly braces is going to execute if this first condition is false and if this condition inside these parentheses is true. So console.write line greater than 4. So now when we run this program, it should print out greater than 4 and it does. Awesome. Then there is an else statement, which is going to run if none of the preceding statements in the series of if and else if actually ran. So if we change the x to be 4 and now run the program, x is not less than 4. It's not greater than 4 because obviously it's 4. And when we run this, it's not going to print anything. If we wanted to print something, we must put an else statement here and inside write console that write line x is 4. And now when we run this, x is 4. Amazing. If you want to check for equality, you use the double equal sign operator. So if x equals equals 4, and if only one statement is coming after an if statement, you do not need to put curly braces after the if statement. So if x equals equals 4, we want to print x is 4. Then there are also operators greater or equal or less or equal. By now we know quite a bit about if statements, but there is one last thing that is worth mentioning and and or operators. So let's disassemble this if statement. We have two variables of type int x and y and I am gonna read this if statement out loud. So if x is equal to 4 and at the same time this is the and operator y is greater than 5 or this is the or operator x is less than 3 and at the same time y is equal to 7. So an and operator means that booleans on both sides have to be true in order for the whole expression to evaluate the true. So if you want this whole parentheses to be true, x needs to be 4 and y needs to be greater than 5. The same applies to this parentheses. x needs to be less than 3 and y needs to be 7. This OR operator means that at least one of the booleans must be true for the whole expression to be true. So if we want this if statement to actually run, either this or this must be true because of the OR operator. So only if x is not 4 and y is not greater than 5 and at the same time if x is also not less than 3 and y is also not 7, this if statement is not going to run. If only one of these parentheses is true, this whole thing in these if statement parentheses is going to be evaluated as true. And because x is 4 and y is 6, this is going to be true. So hello guys should be printed out to the console. And yep, it is. If y was not greater than 5, so for example, if y was exactly 5, hello guys would not be printed to the console. As you can see, nothing is printed to the console. However, if we change x to be 2 and y to be 7, this is not gonna be true, but this is going to be true. Therefore, the whole if statement is gonna be true and this code is gonna run. Yep. Switch statement is basically just a condensed, simplified and easier to read series of if statements, which is perfect for some occasions, but unusable for others. Anything you can write in a switch statement, you can also do by using if statements. Suppose we have an integer and we want to check for five different values of the integer. 
So we have int x. We could do it by using if statements. So we are checking if x is 0, if not, if it is 1, if it is 2, 3, 4, and if x is none of that, it prints out ugly number. We can also do this by using the switch statement. We are gonna write switch, two parentheses, and the variable that we want to switch upon, in this case it's x, then two curly braces, and inside we want to write case 0, colon, and console.writeLine 0. And if we want to end the execution of the switch statement, because if x is 0, then it should print out 0, and it should not do further comparisons. So we want to end the execution of the switch statement, and for that we have to write break. After break, the execution of the code is going to jump after this switch statement, so the next code that would actually execute is this console.readLine. We also want to check for cases 1, 2, 3 and 4. Then if you noticed, we are writing out ugly number whenever none of the previous if and else if statements actually executed. Inside a switch statement, there is no else clause but there is rather a default clause, which pretty much does the same thing. So default, column, and console.writeLine, ugly number. And also don't forget to break. This switch statement and this series of if, else, if, and else statements is functionally the same, and it's up to you to decide which way of checking the value of an integer is better. However, you cannot check multiple variables inside the switch statement and you cannot use AND or OR operators inside it. So if you for example wanted to check for that crazy IF statement that we wrote a few minutes earlier with all those AND operators and OR operators and multiple numbers, we could just not do that inside the switch statement. So now when we run this code, it should print out twice 2, because it's gonna print 2 from the else if here, and also from the case 2 inside our switch statement. So f5 and 2, 2. Amazing! And now if we change the value of x to something which is not checked for inside this if statement, and also inside this switch statement, it should print out ugly number twice again, so 44, and now when we run it, ugly number, ugly number, amazing. So now let's delete this if statement, and there is one more thing worth mentioning, and that is that you can stack case labels like this. If you write, for example, case 67, and now column, whenever the x is 1 or 67, it's gonna print 1 to the console. So when we change this to 1, it's gonna print 1. And when we change the x to be 67, it should print out 1 again. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I really recommend you to go to the link in the video description which will take you to an exercise on resocoder.com, where you will have a few questions and coding assignments. The only way to actually learn something is by doing it. I hope that this tutorial helped you. If it did, give this video a like and also don't forget to share it. If you don't want to miss any new tutorials, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button and see you in the next video.